In this episode, I'll talk about my experience with my 2017 Toyota Tundra over the past three years. These three years included several long distance towing trips. The Tundra is regularly considered when people are making a decision to buy a half ton truck for towing. Hey everybody, this is John Marucci. Thanks for visiting the On The Road YouTube channel. You know, this channel is all about helping you get the most out of your RV travel experience. Before we get going, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when new videos are published. If you want to dive deeper, we put more content and photos on Instagram and Twitter at John Marucci. So here's my story. I bought my first trailer, an RPOD 171, in April of 2016, and I towed it with my 2014 Honda Pilot four-wheel drive. The towing experience was fair. For example, I remember one time driving in strong winds and having to get off the interstate and choosing back roads due to the stressful towing experience. If you're interested, I have a review on towing with a Honda Pilot that speaks to this experience. When I decided to get a slightly larger trailer, my 2017 RPOD 179, I also upgraded to the 2017 Toyota Tundra. I did this for two reasons. First, I wanted to have a better towing experience, and second, I wanted to future-proof my tow vehicle just in case I were to upgrade to a larger trailer. So let's jump into the long-term review of the Toyota Tundra. You know, the Tundra took top honors as the most reliable full-size pickup truck by J.D. Powers in 2019. It was a U.S. vehicle dependability study. They used 2016 trucks, and the Tundra beat out several well-known 2016 competitors. So here are some of the basic stats for the Toyota Tundra. I have a 2017 Tundra, and it's an SR5 4x4. I purchased a double cab, which I like very much. And the nice thing about the double cab is it extends the space in the back cab without having to have the crew max, and actually has a lot of room in the back seat if you look at this. The seats are very nice back there, and there's plenty of space. Also, if you flip the seats up, you'll see that you can have quite a bit of storage actually underneath the back seat. It comes with a 5.7 liter V8 which has 381 horsepower and 401 foot-pounds of torque. You know, the engine compartment's quite large and the engine has a lot of power. Now, this is the second generation Tundra. It was first introduced in 2007 and it was refreshed in 2014. The latest news is that the current Tundra is not scheduled to be replaced until the 2022 model year. So let's look at some standard features on the Tundra. First of all, it comes with a tow package and tow haul mode. So that means that it has, actually has lower gearing and has more torque. It has the 4.30 axle ratio and an engine and transmission fluid cooler, included with a heavy-duty battery and alternator. And of course, because of the tow package, it has the integrated 4 and 7-pin connectors at the back. Now, one of the really nice things I like about the Tundra with towing, it actually has a manual headlight leveling switch inside the cab. And the Tundra also comes with a TPMS, which is a tire pressure monitoring system. So let's look at the options package that came with my truck. I got the TRD off-road package, and those included the larger wheels and tires. Now, the wheels are beautiful, in my opinion. And it also came with the trail-tuned shocks, which help a lot with the uh, suspension. It has the engine and fuel tank skid plates, so if you are going off-road, that's a good safety feature. And front tow hooks if you get in any trouble. Okay, the SR5 upgrade package even added more. So really importantly, it came with a 38 gallon tank, which means you can go longer distances between the gas stations. And I really enjoy the front bucket seats. Now these bucket seats are really comfortable for longer trips. So I've gone on several longer trips towing and the bucket seats just provide a really nice amount of comfort for longer trips, as well as around town and on bumpy roads. So the bucket seats are definitely a plus. It also has a compass and auto dimming rear view mirror, which come in handy. And also the all weather liner and door sills. So these are especially helpful in inclement weather. You have these door sills and weather liners as part of the truck. Something I really, really appreciate is the spray on bed liner. So if you got this truck stock, it wouldn't have the spray on bed liner, but part of the option package is it had the spray on bed liner, which comes in very handy. So here's some aftermarket add-ons. First of all, the running boards. So the running boards are really helpful to get in and out of the truck. The truck doesn't sit very low, 
So you have to be able to get up into the truck and get out easily. And the running boards, in my opinion, are fairly essential. The next thing I added was really something I love, which is the Toyota bed mat made for the Tundra. It's custom made back there. And the nice thing about the bed mat, things don't slide on it. It's a thick piece of rubber and anything you put in there is really not gonna move easily. Highly recommend the bed mat. I also added a cargo net right behind the cab of the truck that's in the bed. And that's very helpful to put things like your cords, uh, hoses, etc., in there while you're traveling. So one of the things I did that I really like, incredible amount of uh, utility is adding the Tano cover to the, to the truck. It's from Xtang, and it's the Encore model, and it's locking. Now, the nice thing about this uh, Tano cover is that you can actually fold it up. And I especially like the fact that you can fold the front part up that's by the cab of the truck, because then you can put things in there, tools, etc., that you can get out easily. So it folds in a tri-fold manner and works extremely well. Another thing I added was towing mirrors. Now I bought the Trail Ridge models. These are towing mirrors that extend out manually. You can flip them in as well. They come in extremely handy and are also a very important safety feature when you're towing. So I love these towing mirrors. I'm glad I put those on as well. And finally, I added the Blue Ox uh, Sway Pro weight distribution hitch to tow with, and that works extremely well with the Tundra. Those are some of the options. So let's look at some other stats around the truck. Let's talk about fuel economy with the Tundra. You know, it's not stellar. You get 13 miles per gallon around the city and 17 on the highway. Now here's a quick note. The current model, the 2020, is substantially the same with some tech upgrades, but all of the models have a 5.7 liter engine for all the model variants. Okay, let's talk about ownership experience. So this is a review as of April 2020. You know, right now, after three years, I have total mileage of 22,400 miles on my truck and I've towed for 12,800 miles on the truck. So that's 57% of the time I've put miles on the truck has been towing. So that's a lot of towing as a percent of total miles. You know, one of the things that's really wonderful about this truck is the dashboard. It's very easy to read gauges, kind of old school. It has really large controls, which I love because apparently they were built. So even if you had gloves on, you could adjust the controls easily. Things like the fan speed, and the temperature in the cab. So I love this part of the truck. It makes it very simple to use and it's not difficult to try and change things like the temperature in the cab. So let's talk about this as a daily driver. So the Toyota Tundra, in my opinion, is very smooth and comfortable as a daily driver. It's a great truck just to drive around town to go to and from work. So it also has excellent four wheel drive response when you need it. And this would be like an inclement weather. It's very easy to adjust the four wheel drive between the various settings that you have. So in my opinion, the, the Tundra has a very solid and excellent build quality. It just feels like a great truck to drive. And all I've had to do so far is some basic maintenance on the truck and nothing major at all as far as repairs. Okay, so let's talk about the towing experience with the Toyota Tundra. I've had no performance issues and I consider it to be a solid tow vehicle for small and mid-sized trailers. Now there's not much of a hit in terms of miles per gallon when you're towing. I get between nine and 11 half miles per gallon, really depending on the size of the trailer that I'm towing. And in my opinion, that's better than the hit you get on the Honda Pilot, which brings it from 24 miles per gallon on the highway down to about 10. Now, just as a note here, I do use a weight distribution hitch since the rear of the Tundra tends to sag with heavier tongue weights. There is a factory brake controller, but I think that's kind of a weakness on the Tundra and you'll find that on various forums. It's not very sensitive. So let's talk about towing my R-Pod 179. This was my main trailer from April 2017 to about April 2019. I did just about 9,000 miles towing the R-Pod 179 with the Toyota Tundra, including some pretty long trips. You know, the R-Pod 179 weighs in at about 2,900 pounds unloaded. And you know, my mileage with the Tundra ranged between 10 and 11 half miles per gallon. And that depends on the terrain and the wind conditions. I did use a weight distribution hitch, the Blue Ox Sway Pro, and it made it an easier experience. And really, I barely felt like the R-Pod was even back there most of the time. Okay, let's look now at towing the Keystone Bullet 243 BHS with my Toyota Tundra. This has been my main trailer from April 2019 to present. I put just about 3,800 miles on the truck towing the Keystone Bullet, including one round trip to Florida from Michigan and back. Now the Keystone weighs about 5,000 pounds unloaded. 
Now my mileage got hit a little bit compared to the R pod, and I range from in the low nine miles per gallon to the high nine and even 10 a little bit. Now again, that depended on the terrain and the wind conditions. And actually, if you go too fast, if you go faster than say 60 or 65, you're also gonna get a pretty good hit towing the Keystone Bullet as far as miles per gallon. Okay, but with the Keystone Bullet especially, the weight distribution hitch, and again, I had a Blue Ox Sway Pro, made it an easy experience. And you can definitely tell the difference when towing the Keystone Bullet that it's back there. Now, this is especially true when going down to Florida this last time, we were going on the hills of Alabama, you could definitely tell going up hills that the trailer was back there and getting towed. And I also did some testing, interestingly, towing with cruise control, trying to keep the trailer at the same speed versus controlling the RPMs and letting the speed adapt a little bit. It's actually easier uh, towing when you're doing the manual without uh, using cruise control. So let's look at some final thoughts on the Toyota Tundra. In my opinion, the Tundra is a very dependable truck and will really maintain its value in the marketplace. It's comfortable, and a safe daily driver when not towing. So just be aware, I didn't just buy this for a tow vehicle. I also bought this to drive when I wasn't towing and I wanted a good truck and I ended up with one, in my opinion. This is really a nice truck. The four-wheel drive works well in inclement weather. So I've had a few opportunities to use the four-wheel drive when the weather wasn't nice and it works wonderfully well. It's also an outstanding tow vehicle, especially for lighter trailers. So if you're looking for something to tow an R-Pod or really any trailer under, say, 3,500 pounds, I think you'll be very pleased with the Tundra. And I would also say it's a pretty good choice for a mid-sized trailer when you're talking about something between 3,500 and 6,000 pounds unloaded weight. Now, it does work hard on hills, especially with my mid-sized trailer. You could feel the truck working pretty hard, but nothing too much that it couldn't handle. And I did take about a one mile per gallon hit for the larger trailer at higher speeds. All right, now the miles per gallon is poor as a daily driver, so just be aware of that. In fact, when I bought the truck, when I asked the dealer about the miles per gallon, he said, you don't need to be worried about that. It's not good. And anyone who buys a Tundra, that's kind of the running joke. Just realize you're not gonna get very good miles per gallon in the truck. But, you know, if you just have a short uh, stint to work and back, it's not really a bad deal. And you know, it's gonna be a little bit below average when towing, so it's not gonna be great towing either. Some trucks will get better miles per gallon than the Tundra. However, it does have plenty of power and torque. You know, the 381 horsepower and the 401 foot-pounds of torque come in really handy. And you can definitely feel confident towing most trailers of midsize or smaller with the Tundra. Now, it does not have a very good factory brake controller, in my opinion, and that came on board from the factory is just not very sensitive. And you know, the rear springs aren't fantastic either, and they do need help when towing. Even on the lighter trailer, you'll get some sag in the back, and that's why a weight distribution hitch works really well to level out the towing experience. So in conclusion, I would buy one again, given I had a mid-sized trailer smaller in a heartbeat. I really enjoy this truck. It's highly recommended. So that's the wrap up on the long-term review of the Toyota Tundra. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and share it. This is John Marucci. Remember to stay safe. Thanks for watching. So long for now.